Hello everyone, today we will be starting with chapter 2 of computer science and the name of the chapter is formulas and functions in excel. This chapter will contain the following topics. First, formulas in excel. Second, creating a basic formula. Third, using compound formula. Fourth, using text formula. Fifth, cell references and its types. Next, cell reference of another worksheet, then functions and function library. The very first topic in our chapter is formulas in Excel. Formulas are used to carry out calculations that involve basic arithmetic operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication and division in Excel. These formulas have the same syntax as we use in mathematics. The difference is in mathematics we specify the numbers on which the operations are performed but in Excel we use the cell address. The address of a cell is located by checking the row and column number. In the figure attached, I have given some examples. The first cell is A1, which means it belongs to the column A and row 1. And the same goes for the rest of the cells. The next thing is components of a formula. A formula has many components. The first one is equal to sign. This is the most important thing in a formula because without this, no formula can be applied in Excel. Then comes the arithmetic operators like plus, minus, multiplication or division. All these signs are very important in a formula. Then comes your function names. The function that you want to use like it is addition, subtraction, or any other formula you have to specify the particular name of that function the next is your cell reference cell reference means the cell address on which you have to perform the operation last one is the parenthesis parenthesis means the brackets that are to be used to specify the range of the cells that are being used in the formula In Excel, formulas are of three types. The first one is simple formula, second compound formula and the third one is text formula. Our very first type of formula is simple formula. As the name suggests, it is very simple in nature as it contains only one operator. So at, the, at one time you can use only one of the operators. It can be addition, multiplication, division or subtraction. Now to create a simple formula you can follow the below given steps. First open a worksheet in MS Excel and then enter the data as I have shown in figure 1. Once you have entered the data click on the cell where you want the total of the marks to be displayed. In my figure it is cell C7. In that cell firstly you will type the equal to sign which will indicate the beginning of the formula. After that you will click on that cell from where you will start the addition. In my figure it will start from C2 and it will go till C6. So we will start like equals to C2 plus C3 plus C4 plus C5 plus C6 and as shown in the figure you can see that I have done the same things in the cell C7. After typing this formula you will press the enter key and as shown in the figure 2 the result 90 is shown in the cell C7. So thus in this example we are simply doing the addition of the marks of 5 subjects. Our next type of formulas is the compound formula. This formula is also known as a complex formula and contains more than one operator which means we can use two or three type of operators at the same time. It contains more than one operator such as the formula to calculate simple interest which is principal into rate into time divided by 100. Now the steps to create a compound formula are 
First, open a new worksheet. Enter the following data, principal amount, rate, time in the worksheet as I have shown in the figure 1. Then in the cell in which you want to calculate the simple interest which is B4 in my figure 1, enter the formula which will start as equals to then parenthesis B1 into B2 into B3 parenthesis close divided by 100. After that press the enter key and you will get the result as shown in the figure 2. The last type of formula is the text formula. They are used to add characters, words or string values by using the ampersand symbol. The joining of strings is known as concatenation. Now the steps to create a compound formula are first type two strings I love and my country in the cells A1 and B1 respectively. Now for adding these two write the formula equals to A1 ampersand then double quote start space close the double quote B1 ampersand in the cell C1 and press enter key as I have done in the figure 1 and after pressing the enter key you will get the result displayed in the C1 as I love my country. The next important topic in our chapter is cell reference and its types. The cell address in a formula is known as cell reference and it is used for identifying a cell or a range of cells. The cell reference has two types. First is relative cell reference and the second one is absolute cell reference. The first type of cell reference is relative cell reference. Calling the cells just by their column and row labels such as A1 is called relative cell reference or which we simply know as the cell address. Whenever a formula is copied and pasted to other cells, the cell reference or the cell address in the formula or function changes relatively according to the location where it has been copied. A simple example of relative cell reference is if a formula of A1 plus B1 which is written in the cell C1 is copied to the cell C2, the formula will automatically change to equals to A2 plus B2 for the cell C2. Another example in which I'll consider a function would be like if a simple sum function of equals to sum C3 till E3 in the cell F3 is copied to cell E4 it will automatically change to sum C4 to E4 for the cell E4. This will uh, this is shown with the help of an example in the below given figures figure 1 and figure 2. In figure 1 I have prepared a progress report in which there are 4 students and the marks of their 3 subjects have been entered. And for calculating the total, I have entered the formula in the cell F3 which is sum C3 to E3. And when the same formula is copied in the next cell that is F4 which can be seen in the figure 2, the cell address has changed from C3 to C4 and from E3 to E4. And in the same manner, you can perform it for the rest to cells. The next type of cell referencing that we'll be reading now is the absolute cell reference. Absolute cell reference means when the cell address is not changed when the formula is copied from one location to any other location. To make a cell as an absolute cell reference we simply need to add a dollar sign in front of the row address and the column address to make it an absolute cell reference. Here I have shown an example in which I am multiplying two cells 
and one I have made as a relative cell reference and the other is an absolute cell reference. So the formula is B1 into dollar C dollar 1 which means that B1 is the relative cell reference and dollar C dollar 1 is the absolute cell reference. When this same formula is copied from the cell D1 to the cell D2, the relative cell reference which is B1 gets changed to B2 but the absolute cell reference which is dollar $C dollar $1 remains unchanged. This can be seen with the help of this example. Here I have multiplied two numbers 10 into 20 and this B1 is the relative cell reference and this C1 I have made as an absolute cell reference. So the product of these two will be 200 and again in the next row I have again inserted two values one is 20 and the other is 0 but since I am applying absolute cell reference this 20 will get multiplied to the C1 and the result will be 400. The next topic in our chapter is cell reference of another worksheet. As the name suggests it helps us in using the value from a cell in another worksheet of the same workbook in a formula. The formula for this is cell address plus sheet name exclamation mark then cell address. So by comprehending this formula we will understand this. The first cell address means the cell address that is of the current worksheet plus the sheet name will be referring to the other sheet that we are using and the cell address after the exclamation mark means the address cell address from this sheet whose name will be specifying here. Now I have explained this with the help of an example. Suppose we have this formula B2 plus sheet 2 exclamation mark B2 which we are applying in this figure C. Here the figure B1 has a number 20. Then in the figure 2 which is sheet 2 we, are, we have inserted another number which is second number and then we are applying the formula in the sheet 1 which is B2 plus sheet 2 exclamation mark B2 and after we press the enter key we will get the sum which should be 50 means first number plus second number 20 plus 30 equals to 50. A very important topic in this chapter that we will be studying is functions. So what are functions? Functions are the predefined formulas that come with excel and perform calculations. They are present in the formulas tab in the function library. Function saves a lot of time for you as you need not to write the formula and you can access it directly from the function library. A function has different parts like equal to sign, parenthesis, function name and arguments and you have studied them in the formula as well. Next we will be studying some of the commonly used functions in excel. I have made a table in which I have given the name of the function, their purpose and example. So the first one is sum. It calculates the sum of a given range and the formula is equals to sum b1 till b6. This B1 till B6 means that all the columns starting from B1 to B6 will be calculated in this formula. The next is average. It calculates the average of a given range. So formula is equals to average B1 to B6. The next formula is max. It returns the highest number in the range. The formula is equals to max C1 to C10. It means that the highest number that is lying within the range of C1 to C10 will be the output of this formula. Then min, it returns the lowest number in the range. The formula is equals to min C1 to C10. This will give you the lowest value that lies within these cells. Then the next uh, formula is today. It displays the current date. The formula is equals to today then square root number it returns a square root the formula is equals to square root or square root c5 here it means that you can write the number directly or you can give the cell address as well so square root 16 will give you the output 4 
the next topic is function library the function library is present on the formulas tab apart from the very common functions like sum average and count there are numerous functions in the excel function library the main purpose of this function library is to carry out tasks like formatting of the text referencing the cells calculating financial rates and analyzing the statistical values the functions that are included in the function library are first is auto sum this helps you in calculating the sum of the range of numbers automatically second financial it helps in determining the changes in investments and loans and contains all the formulas that helps you in calculating these two values the next one is logical it returns a value as a true or false answer the next is text it helps you in managing the text that is present in your worksheets and helps you in do doing the formatting of the text then date and time the date and time includes the various functions that are related to date and time maths and trigonometry it contains the basic mathematical functions like addition subtraction and also helps in finding the trigonometric values like sine cosine and the tangent of any angle now i'll give you an example that how to use the auto sum function for that you need to open a new worksheet in excel enter the data in the worksheet as i have done in figure 1 then select the cells that contain the marks in different subjects for example i have selected c2 till c6 then click on the auto sum function which is present in the function library group on the formulas tab here you will see this auto sum click on it and a drop down box will appear at the top of this drop down you will see the sum option click on that and the result will automatically appear in the cell c1 as i have shown in the figure now i'll be telling you an example that how to use the insert function so firstly make a worksheet as i have prepared in figure 1 then here i am using the average function as i have to calculate the average so go to the insert function that is present in the function library group on the formulas tab when you click on the insert function an insert function dialog box will appear as in figure 1 then from there you can choose the average and click on okay a function argument box will appear on the screen as shown in the figure 2 fill in the range for for example c2 till e2 in the number 1 box and click on okay the result will appear in the selected cell like the uh, in the first one it is 92 and in the same manner you can calculate the average for the remaining cells